It's a PSA, regulate your flicking, guys. Hello, friends, and welcome to my channel for another custom figure video. Doing something totally different today. Uh, first time I've ever worked in this scale, and I'm really excited about it. We are going to be repainting this guy. This is a Jack specific Batman vs. Superman Batman figure. It's, I think, a third scale. I first saw one of these when YouTuber Cosplay Chris repainted one years ago. And I thought, man, it'd be fun to do one of these days. And I did my own Mezco version, which you can see on the channel. But I've always thought, man, one of those big ones would be so cool, especially because I am like an avid painter of figures and skin tones and eyes and stuff like that. So I thought I could really try to make one of these look like an expensive premium statue. Uh, but I never had one and I never had the room for one. Just so happens that my next door neighbor, who's a huge Batman fan, had this guy. And I'd kind of been thinking in my head for a while, like it'd be really cool to repaint it for him. And it's his birthday about a week from now. And so I conspired to get this away from his house when he wasn't home. And I'm gonna repaint it as a surprise for him. He's a great guy, a great friend, super lucky to have him as a neighbor. So I thought this would be a really fun thing to do for his birthday. And you know, take this figure he already had and, and level it up for him. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's get into it. So we're starting here with a black wash. This is watered down black acrylic paint. Very inexpensive stuff you can get at any craft store. Okay, so at this point, I'm, I'm wiping off the excess paint. And you can see what's happening is it stays in the recesses and the raised pattern is what uh, remains as like being a lighter color because I'm wiping the paint off of it. To do that, I was initially using one of these rags that I have. And then I realized that the fibers were too big and so they were wiping down into the crevices where I didn't want. And I remember that I have the cape from this figure that I detached and the cape itself is uh, like, it's got kind of a nice, almost like a little fleece type of texture to it, but it's also low pile enough that I can do this and it won't take away the stuff down in the recesses that I want to keep. So I'm going to do that for the whole figure and uh, I'll check back in when I'm on to the next part. So let's, let's look at the difference here. This is where the wash has been done and I wiped it down. Like this is how it looked before. And this is what it looks like now. So it's really just making this really excellent sculpt pop out quite a bit. And I think that's really gonna just elevate this thing already. All right, now that I've got the black wash done, you can see that the suit is looking a lot better. It's a lot darker. What I wanna do is accentuate the muscles. So for that, I'm gonna be using this round watercolor brush. I like this because of the way it's shaped. It holds a lot of water and uh, it has still like a fine tip on it. The idea here is gonna be to build up in the recesses of the muscles, like some shadows. So again, we'll try it on the back here. Let's look at like this kind of muscle line right here. So we're just gonna kind of take this. And you don't wanna use too much water for something like this because it can end up like wiping away what you've already done. But yeah, and then I'm just gonna feather the edges a bit here. and then wipe away some of the excess. And so you see what that does is it gives it like a nice shadow to the muscle and that really helps to define it. You know, you don't want it to be like too pronounced. So you can see I've wiped quite a bit of it away, but it gives you that nice shadow look of like overhead lighting. And then there's, you know, the bulge of the muscles casting a shadow. So we're gonna do that, not so much on the back because you won't see it, it'll be covered by a cape. But, um, you know, I do kind of want to just practice it a little bit on this material and then uh, go ahead and move to the front. All right, going into a sped up time-lapse mode here because I want—I thought it was important to show this stuff, but I didn't want to, you know, do it in real time because it's kind of slow. But here you can see me doing what I talked about a second ago where I'm going in and articulating the musculature, basically just following what's already there. Uh, it's a really nice sculpt. I, I believe in that Cosplay Chris video, he said that these were scanned from the actors in the suits which I would believe because all of these are an incredible sculpt likeness, despite the fact that their paint jobs don't really bring it out. So you can see I'm, I'm filling in those recessed areas of the muscle with watered down black for shadow and then doing the same technique I showed on the back. All right, so now that the body paint is done, I've marked on here with some Sharpie. You can see where it's shiny, uh, where I want the scratches and cuts and whatnot to be. So I'm gonna take a utility knife and just go ahead and start carving those out. The bullet hole one, I'll probably use a drill bit and just kind of like lightly tap it in there. And then once that's done, I'm gonna take some silver paint and fill in where the white is just to make it look like it's been scratched and revealing like the metal that this is made out of. 
Okay, so I got one of the gauntlets done here. I'm taking just a little bit of this kind of light brown color and I'm just getting a little bit on the brush, right? Because you want to dry brush it and you wipe off any excess and then you just kind of lightly dust the raised parts of it and you can, you know, blend it in with your finger if you do too much. But uh, basically you just want to like kiss the raised areas with it. Hopefully you can see the difference here between the two flat black versus with some dry brushing on it. It just, you know, it gives it a much more like lived in feel. Looks like Batman's been out doing stuff. And so once this is all finished, I'm gonna take it out and, and seal it with a clear coat. And that's just gonna lock all this stuff in so you can be handled. You don't have to worry about, you know, the oils in your hands might cause this paint to be disrupted because it is a water soluble paint. It's just acrylic. So, but yeah, I'm gonna continue to do this to the rest of the figure and then, uh, It'll be time to paint the head. All right, now we're getting to the part I'm most excited about. We're gonna paint the head on this guy. I'm not gonna paint the black because it's black already. So that's a nice thing. I mean, I'll, I'll do some dry brushing on it to bring out some of the form a little bit and just make it look a little more lived in. But again, you know, it's already black. Uh, we're gonna repaint the eyes and the mouth. The nice thing about this is because it's so large, like I'm used to painting heads that are this big, right? <laughs> so like, to go from this size to this size is going to be like a, a dream come true. Uh, but I'm going to use the same techniques. So, you know, I get asked about how to paint heads from time to time, and I would love to post a tutorial, but these are so small. I can't paint them with the camera in my face. Like it's impossible to do. So this is going to serve as a nice kind of like glimpse at how I do it. I mean, it's a little different because it's not the whole face. It's just the mouth plate and that does change things because there are things you do on the forehead and the middle of the face that you do differently than the the chin but the overall technique of how i paint these is going to be shown on this so i'm excited about that as far as supplies go here are the paints i'm going to use uh these came in like a flesh paint color set i'll put a link in the description below i got these on amazon this one i believe is the same brand but it it was part of a different set and I'll, I'll link that one as well. And then this is just like craft store acrylic paint. The way I do this, like anyone can do it. And I'm hoping that that comes through on here. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. First, I'm gonna tape this guy off so that I don't get paint on the black parts. All right, so Batman's all taped up here. And the first thing I did was mix a little paint to try to match the tone that's already here. And I went into some of the areas where there was black showing I mean, I got pretty close. The paint's still a little bit wet, so it looks a little off color, but to the naked eye, like it's pretty much bang on. So how I like to do this is I will start generally with like a mid-tone. So I'm using this Barbarian Flesh paint. You know, it doesn't have to be this one specifically, but it's just a good one to uh, start in the middle of the road with. I'm gonna mix some water into it. I still want the paint to be fairly viscous and not too watered down, but still watery enough that I can splatter it, right? And then I'll do a test. So you see you got the spray on there. And then I'll just finally kind of mist it. Now in this case, since this is a bigger head sculpt, I don't really mind if the droplets are bigger. I just flick it onto it. And it's gonna look a little weird right now because it's beat it up, but as it dries, it'll flatten out. And so what this does is it starts to create variations in the skin tone. And when you have variations, you get realism because our skin is not just one color. I mean, look at my hand compared to this, right? What we're doing is approximating the different colors. And I mean, you know, under your skin, you can see blue veins, you know, there's capillaries, there's all kinds of stuff. So switching it up like this and making a bunch of different colors is gonna help give it that very realistic look. And so I'm gonna do that with all these different colors and just build up a texture and some different values. And then it'll be on to the next step. So we're gonna go from mid to dark to the lightest color, uh, and that's gonna give us our skin tone. All right, so here we are with the paint dry, and that is three layers. Now that the bigger splotches are down, I'm gonna go lighter and I'm gonna go with a finer mist, and that's gonna help break up those bigger areas and really just start to make it look more like fine and skin-like. Again, getting the excess out. Now, as you're misting, if the if the splotches get too big, you can always just take your finger and kind of dab them and they'll even out a bit more. That also helps to kind of water them down a little bit more or kind of spread them thinner and that will provide like a nice kind of transparent layer of the lighter color without just 
decimating what's underneath. And you can regulate the size of the splotches by like how much water is on the brush, how far away you do the flicking, how quick you do it, right? So that is a bigger one. If you do it sl more slowly, you get a lot more control and slow and smaller little droplets. So, you know, a lot of people kind of complicate painting heads. And I mean, you could say that this way is complicated too, but you don't have to have any skill level to do this. I mean, really, I'm just, the only, the only ability you need is to be able to like regulate your flicking. <laughs> the PSA, regulate your flicking guys. I mean, that's skin. And again, this was just a single flat skin tone and we just flicked a bunch of stuff on there and now it looks like a person's face. So that's pretty, pretty damn cool. <laughs> so next up, I'm gonna take a little bit of red acrylic paint because I want a very runny reddish flesh color. I'm gonna very lightly apply this wash, right? And see like that's too much right there, but that's okay because that's what I want. And then I'm gonna take a clean brush and I'm just gonna push it around because, and I want it to be like just a very thin look, you know, have it a little thicker in some areas, but essentially this just makes it look like blood is circulating through the face under the skin. And the mold goes right there. All right, going voiceover again here because this video is getting a little bit long, but essentially I'm doing the lips here and I'm taking different color tones that are similar to what the lips already were and just kind of making these faint little lines that our lips have. I also darken the crease where the lips meet to make that a little more believable and have some depth. And then here I'm just lightly painting a sort of light ridge around the lips. If you look in the mirror, you'll see that all of our mouths have that. And that just really helps to kind of give it the illusion that light is hitting it in a very natural way. And again, just helps to lend itself to the realism here. So next up, we wanna do the stubble, but before we do the stubble, we wanna do the five o'clock shadow. And to do that, we're actually gonna use some blue. Now, again, this is just blue acrylic paint, nothing fancy. So similar to what we did with the red, we're gonna really water this down so that it looks about like that. So all the places where the beard would be, we're gonna use some blue and we're just gonna like faintly wash it around. What this does is gives the illusion of hair under the skin. So a lot of people would wanna use gray or black here and they'd wanna just go straight on top of the skin with like a solid color. The reason you don't wanna do that is because then you just have this like chalky gray when what you need is this broken up under the skin look because we have hundreds of little hairs, little whiskers underneath the skin when we shave, right? Doing the blotting technique and we're letting it stay kind of broken up like we did with the red. When you do this, I really recommend looking at the facial hair pattern of the person you're painting if it is like a likeness thing like this. You know, a lot of people wanna do this way up here to like this crease in the face, but you only see it typically at the lip and it kind of goes up into a triangle shape like that on either side. Now this isn't gonna be the full on stubble, right? This is gonna be like the base layer for the stubble. So I know a lot of people are probably like, what, blue? And it doesn't look blue. Like it just looks like how it's supposed to. All right, so same technique with the black. We're gonna go real light, real watered down, especially with the black. And I'm gonna start at the cleft in his chin. That has like a real concentration of stubble. And I'm just gonna work my way out. Now that I have the wash laid down, I'm going back in with a dry brush and just breaking it up so that it's not too concentrated, but I'm also dabbing at it so that it has, you know, certain little concentrated areas where it looks like stubble. And this is gonna be like layer one. Like we're gonna do a few different layers for the stubble just to make sure it looks realistic. Again, it's never like a straight line painted. It's always gonna be like a broken up sort of, you know, varying texture. And this is where the patience that you need comes in because this is gonna take a while. So I'm using the same concentration, maybe a little bit more paint, but when you push down on the brush, you can kind of break up the bristles a bit. Uh, what that does is give you kind of like little points you can use 
and I'm kind of going in and just randomly laying in some darker dots and diffusing them with my fingertip. And what that does is give us the look of stubble facial hair. All right, so I got the tape and paper off and uh, yeah, I mean, look at that. That's looking pretty sweet. I'm very, very excited about that. I added some white to it because, you know, he does have some gray hair in his beard. So just some white little whisker stubble to round it out. So you can see what a contrast it is now between the lower face and the eyes, right? Like the eyes they are you know, they suck. Like they're just like a very factory kind of paint job. That's what's next up. And that is really going to send this over the top. So for the eyes, I start off with an off-white color. You don't want to do pure white because it just looks creepy and unnatural and our eyes, you know, have little veins and capillaries and stuff in there. Then I do the ridge that isn't going to be covered with the black makeup, uh, like kind of a pink flesh color. And that helps to just kind of give it a realistic look. Uh, and then from there, I go in with a layer of like a dark brown and that's going to be my base layer. And the reason I do that is to give the eyes like the dark outline that they have. And then for Ben Affleck specifically, his eyes kind of have this like golden amber color to them. So I did my best to approximate that. And I tried to kind of mimic the little striations that we have in our eyes. Like if you really look at an eye up close, like it's, you know, this kind of amazing little like muscle pattern thing. So kind of tried to give it that same sort of look as best I could with the brush. And then finally, I'll go in with black for the pupil. And then I'll use a clear gloss varnish that I typically use on my 112 scale figures because this was so large, I actually borrowed some clear nail polish from my wife uh, because that had like a, a thicker sort of look to it and it gave it the, the right kind of glaze that I wanted. Now, I actually redid the eyes based on what you see here because they were too small. Uh, I, after I stepped away from them, I realized like I just made them too tiny. So I went back in and repainted them larger and you'll see that in the final result here. To make the cape, I got a nice big piece of black pleather from Amazon and I traced the cowl outline and made a template out of tracing paper, which you can see behind Batman's neck there. And then I placed him on it so I have a reference for how long it needed to be. And then from there, I just measured it out, traced out the shape that I wanted. And I didn't do like pointed scallops because this version of Batman doesn't really have those. They're kind of more just like little jagged corners, I think. And from there, I just cut it out and the last step was to weather it and kind of fray the, the ends of it. And then, you know, I just painted it with some brown paint to make it look like it had been dragged on the ground, like how it does on screen. pleased with the finished result here. I'm so excited to give this to my neighbor. It's Monday night. His birthday is Saturday at the time of recording this. I'm going to have to wait almost a week to give this to him, but <laughs> it'll be worth it. I, I hope he digs it. I think this is going to look pretty cool in his office where he keeps it. And uh, yeah, you know, he's he's a big part of my coming to appreciate the Snyderverse. The video I'm sure it does not do justice to just the absolute presence of this thing. Like it's huge. It's like 30, 31 inches tall, I think. 
and it just like you can tell when it's in the room i mean i've walked in a couple times and was just like oh because <laughs> i forgot it was there and this morning i heard my dog barking at it because he found it and was like what the hell so yeah it's a it's a pretty massive figure and just for fun here's my custom mezco bbs batman with the jack specific i mean look at that that's a big boy don't talk to me or my son ever again all right my friends that's going to do it for this video i want to thank you all so much for watching as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. That helps people find the video and the channel. And I invite you to subscribe and join me as I make cool stuff like this. Um, I, you know, I make custom figures, vehicles, dioramas, a lot of stuff you see behind me is on the channel. In addition to making this kind of stuff, I also write and draw comic books and graphic novels. I've worked for all the major publishers and I have a new graphic novel coming out June 4th, 2024, Sin. It is a loose sequel to my 2020 book, Count, which is my sci-fi reimagining of The Count of Monte Cristo. So this book is a, a standalone sequel, so you can read it by itself or, you know, in any order. It's kind of best described as like Terminator 2 meets Unforgiven. It's about this woman who was programmed to be a cyborg assassin for a ruthless dictator. She's free of her programming now, and she's just trying to figure out who she is. And she disappears to a dusty corner of the world where nobody will recognize her. Takes up with a nice family. They start treating her well they take her in as one of their own and then one day bad guys come to town and she has to decide to pick up her swords again and defend the people that she cares about i'm super proud of this book it got me through a really difficult time in life and i'd be honored if you check it out you can pre-order it now through your local comic book shop bookstore or on amazon and i'll have a link to that in the description below so thank you again for watching until next time keep your head on swivel